like an Ethel in there. The night is the one true side of hunting left yet to be explored. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no right or wrong way to hunt at night. All we did is take the funnest sport on the planet and we did it our way. We are all complete addicts. And if anybody tried to come and tell us we had to stop, <laughs> good luck with that. This is our annual checking of equipment. Always have to expect to fix something or change wires or whatever it may be. But that's just kind of part of it. We build this stuff, we make it to last as much as we hunt. We have to have equipment that's gonna be able to go through just about anything, including overhanging trees. We could probably have a tree removal service, to be honest with you, with this rig, as many big trees as we've pulled down over the last several years. But as for now, I'm hoping that whenever I hit the switch, something actually happens. There it is. Like a champ. And I can't think of any better way to test it than to go test it out on a coyote. What do you say? People always think that we travel all over the world to, to do what we do and it's funny because 95% of what people see on TV is, is basically right, right in our backyard. This happens right in your backyard where people have no clue. Once everybody goes to bed on your little 5 or 10 acre piece of property, what goes on. If people only knew what happened right in their backyard, it would sure as heck make it a lot easier for us to get on places people worried about their little house cat or their their dog oh we don't need to we don't need to worry about those coyotes those poor innocent coyotes they're not hurting nobody funny thing is whenever they uh, they come home and their dog is in the mouth of a coyote going off down into the bottom it kind of changes their tune just a little bit I'll tell you what this rig sure does always draw attention I think we've got somebody that's gonna ask if it's a hog hungry and we've told people all kinds of stuff I think one time he was pretty drunk. Jack in the box down the road, somebody asked us if it was a like a UFO hunt. We told him, of course, yes. I mean, if somebody's drunk enough to ask that question, you got to be smart enough to give them the answer that they want. But it always draws looks, that's for sure. Just about everything we do involves the rig on the back of that truck. For us, it's ground zero where all the action takes place. It's where some of our best memories have been made that will stick with us forever. It is a unique, one-of-a-kind, predator-killing creation we built that has evolved over time to what it is today. There are no duplicates. It is the one tangible item we can claim as ours, and it will always be the first of its kind in existence. That is something no one will ever be able to change or take away.
<laughs> Heck yeah. Man, you gotta love those pups. We always kind of have a little bit of anticipation because we never know when we get that first one to commit and come on into the truck, what's gonna happen. I don't know what happened. There was two of them there. There was two coyotes. One of them peeled away and came our direction. And the other one, I guess, took off across the county road, but the, this must have been the dumber of the two. But bottom line, there's a dead coyote laying over there and lights did their job and everything worked out like it was supposed to. Equipment failure is simply not an option. When you have a coyote staring you down at 20 yards, the last thing you need is for everything to start falling apart. One thing's for sure, in this game, there are no redos. And we just don't have time to be jacking around with lights that just don't want to work in the middle of the night. So do yourself a favor. Buy a Wicked Scan Pro and a 403 Kill Light and spend more time actually hunting than fooling around with a no-name light because it doesn't want to work. They are the only lights we've found built as well as the ones we build for ourselves. Gotta love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> There's always that certain time of year. The grass is still tall. The bugs are everywhere. It's not really summer, but it's not fall. All the pups are hearing something new for the first time, and their curiosity is like a drug. They don't know what to do because they've never really been there before. This is their first rodeo. Some will make it, some won't. Some will simply get a free pass, while others may experience the luckiest day of their life, if we make a mistake. But the fact remains, every year, the count starts over, and someone, that unlucky someone, always has to be that number one. Good and too. Hmm. <laughs> Told you there's using one there. <laughs> Trying to understand a bass is about as close as it gets to trying to figure out a coyote. Just the moment you think you have them figured out, they will quickly teach you how much you really don't know. That looks like ethyl in there. It does, I mean, it looks freaking big. When I first started learning how to catch a bass as a kid, one of my mentors, who happened to be twice my age with twice the experience on the water, told me something I've never forgotten. 1433. Thanks, sir. Get back, guys. Yeah. Already knowing the answer, he posed the question. Here we go. One, two, three. What is the most important part of bass fishing to help you catch a bass? Is it bait presentation or possibly water temperature? Or how about even lure selection? Well, being the young greenhorn I was, I assumed his answer would be some complex and profound breakthrough only someone with his experience could possibly know. But to my surprise, he answered his own question to a bright-eyed newbie by simply saying this. The most important fact to always remember about bass fishing is you can't catch a bass where he ain't. 
You'll never catch a bass where there is no bass, no matter what you do or how good you get at fishing for them, he said. That was 20 years ago, and I've never forgotten it. It's about as simple as it gets, and could not be more true for hunting coyotes also. We've learned through experience the most important skill a predator hunter can invest time into mastering before anything else is the skill of learning how to find a coyote first and the rest will follow because no matter what you'll never kill a coyote where he ain't. It sure feels like the old rig has been a million miles on our quest to find the next coyote. I know it hasn't, but it's been well over half that. She's outlasted two trucks, now on her third, and survived just about every field in North Texas. Once, even diving off into a wash big enough to hide a school bus. <laughs> I think our night just ended, ended with a bang. I just don't, I don't even know how we're gonna get it out of here. I mean, that's a four foot drop right there. Hey, are you in bed? Okay. We, <laughs> I kind of need some help. We are in a hole. And when I say a hole, it's more than a hole. It's like a ditch. Hey, make sure that tow rope's in the back of the truck. Yeah, it's the flat rope that should be in the back of the truck. It's either in the back of the truck or under the seat. Okay. Okay, love you. Bye. And be sure to say I love you. <laughs> Baby, I love you. Uh, I'll make Which it up wear? to you. <laughs> yeah. Better put some shoes on. <laughs> make that boots. Uh, uh, oh, jeez. Well, in my defense, I hadn't been on that place for three years, and that wash was not there before. At least that's my story, anyway. It took two trucks, both with 20,000 pound winches, to get her out of that little jam the next morning. Oh, it well broke. Not good. Knock on wood, that was the only time we ever had to leave her somewhere overnight. There's been so many great hunts in the rig, it's simply just too many to count. Like the time myself and Jared killed seven coyotes and a cat on a Tuesday night in less than three hours all on camera, all out of the rig. That was nuts. Or the time Gary killed his first cat with us on camera. Man, was he proud of that cat. History has proven the trucks will come and go, but no matter what vehicle totes her up and down the road, to us, she will always be called the rig. Later on, I had to drop off Jared, so I swung by and picked up an old friend of ours to help run the gun, Ronnie O'Neill. We've killed a lot of coyotes together in the past, and it was good to catch up with an old friend and try to take a crack at one.
right there. I see him? No, I can't see him right there, Chris. Them weeds are too tall. Hang on a minute, let me change sound. leaving until you switch them sounds. I don't know what that does, man, but he was definitely on his way out. He switched the sounds and he came straight back. That was pretty cool. That's not a bad coyote. That might not be this year's model. That might be a that might be a second year coyote. He acted a little bit smarter than that first one. You can usually tell when they're when they're coming in and their ears are a little bit more proportionate to their head. When he stopped that first time and I got real good on him in the camera, he looked pretty pretty healthy. His head was pretty big. But it's a good deal. We got a little bit more time to go. Let's do it. That coyote was more than just a coyote. That coyote was our confidence for this season. To know we managed to get two coyotes within 20 yards, both lit up like a Christmas tree, and both went for a ride in the truck, I believe it's safe to say the rig is back in action. She's like a well-oiled killing machine that just knows when a coyote is close by and it's her turn to shine. She passed the first hunt test this year better than ever before. So all we can do from here is make dang sure we are on every hunt so we can see each set of glowing eyes that decides to pay her a visit. Only time will tell with the changing of the seasons what will happen. As from our experience, you just never know who's going to show up.